What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mud. Check it out. We are getting into Legion number 12 of the original um, Space Marine first founding legions, the 20 legions that the Emperor created to take back the all the disparate planets all around the galaxy, bring them under one banner. And now we are on to the Traitor Legion, number 12. It is the World Eaters. And a lot of you guys have seen my coverage of the World Eaters or the Warhounds earlier. So I'm just going to quickly show you some things that I found really interesting looking at the fluff. We've got a couple of websites pulled up. I've got some um, artwork pulled up. And we'll just constantly check back over here because I am uploading a How to Paint Corn Warrior of Chaos for Fantasy. And it's been taking me forever because Wi-Fi at my lady boss's house is the pits. All right, so let's look at Lexicanum first. Here's a great example of a World Eater's Corn Berserker. And um, the Berserker is the kind of go-to troop that you think about. When you think about the World Eaters nowadays, they, after the um, Horus Heresy, they fled into the Eye of Terror. They were still kind of cohesive as a legion until the day that Karn said, nope, the heck with that. Let's uh, let's just split up every, every man for himself, blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne. Now everybody just kind of thinks of the world eaters as a bunch of corn berserkers that all have the chain axe and the close combat pistol running forward and a chop choppy uh, pew pew. So the, um, the thing is that I'm going to talk about the whole legion, not just the berserkers and what makes them awesome. Yeah, here we go. Scalathrax. That was, that's where they just kind of, it all fell apart. It all went terribly wrong. So Angron is a Primarch. For those of you who don't know him, he's this big red angry guy. And he's got uh, these cranial implants that made him go absolutely super nuts. And now they scream blood for the blood god, often followed by skulls for the skull throne. And it's very creative. So pre-heresy, they were uh, formed for the Unification Wars to reunify mankind. They were the 12th Legion founded on Terra. And uh, from the onset, they were deemed a highly aggressive, hot-blooded, and savage force. Come to Lexicanum or all these other websites, you can read more about them. But what I find interesting is that their pre-heresy colors is white and blue. And even 1D4chan makes note of this, that um, white is the color of like purity and blue is the color of calm. And it's funny that the world eaters from the beginning were we're using these colors. Angron has this whole awesome story about how he was like a gladiator and how the world that he landed on, they implanted his brain with these aggressive, um, this brain chip that kind of rewired his brain waves and made him just go nuts all the time and be super aggressive. And um, how he raised the army of gladiators to throw off the oppressors. And um, then all the, the entire world is coming after him and his army of gladiators. The empire, emperor swoops in at the last minute and says, Angron, you are my son. I am your father. Come with me and we will unite the galaxy. And Angron is like, no, no, I must fight. They'll never take our freedom. And um, the emperor is like, heck with that. <laughs> my son is going to die down there. He is totally outnumbered. I don't care how strong and awesome he is. Uh, he is fighting, he is way outnumbered. So the Emperor, the big E, he teleports him out of there. And Angron never really forgave him for that. So he's, uh, that was like the seeds of what would later sprout into resentment, anger against his father, the Emperor, against everything that he did. He did take the control of the 12th Legion. And up until then, they were known as the Warhounds. And once he took them, this... Um, let's see if I can find it. Here we go. Angron referred to the army he led on his homeworld as the eater of s Eaters of Cities. One of his eager captains took up this description, told Angron that under his leadership, his space marines would be the Eaters of Worlds. And Angron liked the name and adopted it. So they weren't called the Warhounds anymore. They were called the World Eaters. And Angron, um, he started he started saying that, you know, we need these implants. We've uh, got to get the psychosurgery similar to the kind that he received during his gladiator training. He said it would make them super awesome, make them really effective. But um, the thing is, they didn't really understand how to make them. So the Adeptus Mechanicus tried to recreate it using his as a template. And lo and behold, um, they couldn't really understand it. They put it into their neophytes and their, their space marines, and it just made them go totally bonkers. So, 
yeah, and they there were a lot of atrocities. I think there's this one this one um planet that yeah, the planets upon the which the world eaters fell were not merely crushed, they were destroyed utterly. So they it was a little too effective. And it was about this time that they said or it was around this time, the Twelfth Legion was always known as the crazy assault guys. So they would go in, they would drop in, and they would just like chop everybody up. And I think there was a quote that said, you know, if you want if you want uh, a planet not just pacified, if, but completely, you know, taken out, then bring in the world eaters. They will wipe out the government, they will wipe out the army, they will... They will kill everything and everyone that stands in your way. If you want something a little bit more tactical or a little bit more honorable, you would call one of the goody goody boys, like the Smurfs, the Ultramarines, as it were, or one of the other legions. Um, yeah, a lot of people thought that Angron was totally bonkers and his legion had followed him into madness. After the cycle surgeries became commonplace, the brutality they unleashed resulted in these whispers becoming open voices of dissent. After the infamous Gena massacre came to light, the emperor banned the surgery altogether. He said, no more. Like, stop implanting your guys with, with implants that make them go bonkers on the battlefield. It's not good. Angron was like, no, no, dad. I'm going to do what I want to do. You don't know me. You don't know my life. And uh, this resulted in the emperor dispatching Lehman Russ and the Space Wolves to bring Angron back to answer for his insubordination. What resulted was a brief but bloody conf confrontation between the World Eaters and the Space Wolves. And that's kind of the project that we're doing, uh, D from Project One Gaming and I. And Angron, was best, he bested Russ in single combat, but he allowed himself to become encircled by Space Wolves in the process. When it became clear that Angron was a lost cause and did not understand that his own failure to lead resulted in him being entrapped, Russ was like, let's get out of here, let's go back and, and drink some ale and tell stories about wolves. By the beginning of the Horus Heresy, they had an active strength of roughly 150,000, placing them in the higher mid-level tier in regard to Legion size. So they were, they were pretty big uh, once the Heresy broke out. And so you've got all these other, other things going on. You can look at them on their own. Comrade Doctrine, they were known as a very bloodthirsty Legion. And so becoming the Chosen Legion of Korn did little to change this. They just got even more crazy and nuts. They disregarded mortal peril in order to sate their bloodlust in close combat, often displaying a berserker rage that makes them invulnerable to wounds that would kill even a space marine. So, as you could tell, they were just a really crazy legion, and their original colors, let's take a look at the rampage, see if they have a have something for what, what they look like with their colors. Yeah, so this is a pre-heresy squad called the Rampagers. It was very specific to the World Eaters. They kind of modeled their weapons after the um, close combat weapons that Angron and his fellow gladiators used. So chain axes, uh, dual swords, whips, ball and flail. And chains are a huge thing to Angron and the World Eaters. They would wrap their weapons around their hands in chains and they would say that you know we're not going to as long as these chains are on we are not going to drop our weapons we are going to get through the battle firing on all cylinders blasting everything that comes in our path and only after the dust and the blood is cleared shall we uh, unchain ourselves from our weapons so yeah they were they were not a happy happy bunch and after the Horus heresy it was just even even worse. Their helmets, they started adopting these crests that kind of mimic the corn symbol. And the corn um, symbol is kind of like the stylized, well, I mean, if you know it, then, then you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know it, it's kind of like this stylized X with these two columns on the side. I think it just makes them look silly, but um, that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. All right, let's take a look at another good site, Wikia here. Um, you've got more history, and I love the the wiki because it shows you their pre heresy legion badge, the warhounds badge here, um, a world eaters legion color scheme, and then from the book from Horus Heresy, you've got a pre legion, a pre heresy world eaters legion color scheme that's all battered and bruised and bloody, and burnt and stuff, and then you've got a warhounds guy. So you see they've got this dark, nice dark blue. Um, white shoulder pads, white, and this is what I kind of built my my test model after. You can see that it copies a lot of the same uh, colors 
And there's Angron. He's so happy. He he just loves he just loves everyone. He's the happiest guy. Happiest guy there is. I don't want that car. I don't want groceries. So um what really interests me is the stories of guys who remain loyal to the Emperor in the Traitor Legions. And um sometimes you they write short stories and stuff about them but that's what that's what interests me if you know your legion is headed f straight for the dark side like the world eaters are there was just no kind of arguing that yeah for if if you would think one of the legions would turn against the emperor i mean everything from the very beginning angron landed on this planet that was just bloodthirsty and cruel had angron landed somewhere like where robot girly man uh, landed, if he landed on a planet that had that he could have a father figure that was caring and that adopted him and kind of taught him the ways of you know humanity and leadership and, and and honorable combat and stuff. Not to say that he was dishonorable. He was very proud of his martial um, pride and honor and his prowess as a warrior. But um, like I said, he was he grew up in the gladiator pits. And he was bred as a weapon to be a weapon. So it's it's interesting interesting to think like what if what if things had turned out differently, and you know what if he didn't have the butcher's nails that were always egging him on to to fight and to be aggressive, and what if after uh, the emperor teleported him out of the um, out of there when he first met him, or like what if he didn't even teleport him out? What if the emperor said, okay, I see that you want to fight against the, your oppressors and you're doing what you think is right and just like what if the emperor and had sent you know like Horus or um Horus and Perturabo and Rogaldorn or some of the other primarchs down and told them your brother is on this planet he's got an army of gladiators he's gonna die um and I want him to live I want him to 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 stay with his comrades and I want you to help him could you imagine how awesome that would have been? It would have brought the world into compliance. It would have made Angron see that uh, the big emperor, the big E, cared about him, and it might have taken him down another path. Or could you know what? Could you imagine if like the emperor had said, "Okay, these butcher's nails, Angron, you are my son. These butcher's nails are making you go all loopy, bat poopy crazy. I am going to do my best to get these out of you." and what if he, what if the emperor found a way to take the butcher's nails out of Angron and uh, teach him calmness and, you know, serenity and to be at peace with yourself? Like, wow, what, what a, what a different turnout that would have been. But nope, instead you get stuff like this. Blood for the blood god. Yeah. So it, it's cool to think like what might have happened if. Uh, things had gone a little bit differently for Angron and his boys. But that's neither here nor there. They're super angry. They love blasting things left and right. Chop choppy. Pew, pew, pew. Um, oh, another thing that's interesting about them is that they don't have any psychers. They totally got rid of them. So um, if you are running a, a pre-heresy world eaters list, you want to get rid of all of your psychers, your librarians. Um... They never received the Butcher's Nails implants. Uh, they were inimical to psychers, so they sensed that uh, Lorgar was kind of messing with them. And anyway, there's this great story about how the psychers tried to save Angron, and um, they didn't, and Angron was just like, F you librarians! He killed the remaining librarians, and um, he killed the last of them, expunging his legion of the weakness that had plagued his gene sons since his reunification with them. So the librarians of the world eaters, the last fragments of the war hounds within the 12th legion was no more. And Korn was like, yes, excellent, justice planned. Because Korn hates psychers. And uh, that was that. So now their armor is blood red with gold trim. And look at all these battles that they're known for. Blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne. Rah, pew pew. Um, 
So they've got some specialized ranks and formations. Again, if you're doing like a pre-heresy legion, you've got these devourers, which were like the Terminator armor wearing super elite bodyguard. The only way to become one is to kill one in close combat, or if one gets killed by the enemy, um, like super, super world wrestling federation, royal rumble, 30 men enter, one man leaves kind of thing. So <laughs> that, that's pretty cool, but man, you can't really be friends with anyone because you're just going to end up killing them or getting them killed. It's just a not a happy place to be. Big Ben? What the? Uh, there were the Rampager squads, which I showed you guys, and then there were Destroyer squads, which were equipped with rad weapons, bioalchem munitions, and the um, kind of like things that were frowned upon and issued by the more honorable legions. You've got some scouts training. Talk about how attrition rates were high, fatality levels on recruits were the worst of any space Space Marine Legion. No, he's a librarian. He didn't didn't make it out. I remember that white dwarf. That was cool. That was a good that was a good white dwarf. Showed a lot of pre heresy stuff. Mm, all right, so we're doing a current corn color scheme. Try saying that five times fast. And so we're gonna be doing the reds and golds for my next project first founding legion. And then when we go back later when I'm doing project pre-heresy, no not project pre-heresy. Is it project pre-heresy? Which one am I doing with D? I, I gotta write all these down so I don't forget. Hey! There's my boy. Raw! Um, then I'll do an original color, the original color scheme. Here's a World Eater's Devastator carrying the red hand across the fate plate denoting an award for bloody victory by his commanding officer in a previous battle. This is an interesting color scheme. Hmm. I didn't see that before. And you've got some you've got their well known guys here. Lots of lots of lots of champions and stuff. Here's a Legion colors. Clean armor. A lot of spikes on the shoulder pads. Their original white and blue color scheme. Pew pew pew. And the funniest is a 1D4 chan. Gotta check this out. So funny. All I, I mean I love I love 1D4 Chan. You gotta read it after you read all the other ones though, so you can kind of really appreciate. Angron is not a happy chap. Um yeah, here. The World Eaters Pre Heresy color scheme. I I was just thinking this before I read it, and then I was like, hey, awesome. Both colors which, believe it or not, in many cultures ironically stand for calmness and purity. White being cultural, blue being a biological human reaction, proven to calm and relax the human mind. Um, and then if, if you want a good laugh, check out the entry on Karn. It's just so funny because there are all these, um, there are all these funny stories like written by, by guys who follow Karn. And so it's kind of told like by, from the standpoint of traitor guardsmen and stuff. But I mean, hilarity, total hilarity talks about how Karn is just this fun loving guy who comes in, kills everyone. And then he would like fist pump the narrator and break all the bones in his army, uh, in his arm. Like, let's take this one. I was just standing there dumbfounded when Khan looked at me as though noticing me for the first time and yet not surprised by my presence at all. He held his palm out and I obliged him a high five. He'd earned it. Shattered every bone in my arm doing it though. Nice guy, that Karn. So you got to read these stories. So funny. Look at him laughing. He's just having a great time. Um, and all these stories, so awesome. Um, what a great way to end the night. So, thanks for watching. Oh, look at that, 20% battery left. How far are we? 49% in my video. I don't think that, I don't think this went up at all. Wasn't I at 49% when I started this video? Anyways, this is getting super long, so I'm gonna stop recording this, get going, and um, yeah, thanks for watching this super long Fluff Hunters video. See you in the next one.